It's called learning. I have to go to share my screen first. <laughs> okay. All right. There you go. Now let's see if you can see it at all. Are you seeing the main slide or both the slides? The slides with the notes in the second slide. The What's the note? notes in the second slide? Oh, okay. So that's okay. I don't mind you seeing what's coming. All right. Absolutely. So in, in order to be more efficient with my time and keep my promises, uh, we're going to just let you see what's coming. So I know you all know how to read. So what I'm going to be talking about is OER in our public health academic life. And when Dr. Melton um, um, gave kudos to Dr. Warner, one of the things she did in, in her coming to work with us in our department is brought her enthusiasm, her expertise, and her um, excitement about OER with an, um, uh, kind of that questioning um, undertone of, why aren't you guys in the 21st century? Well, we were in the 21st century. And the wonderful thing about being in the 21st century is understanding with the pandemic going on that um, having access to the right tools in a timely fashion is very important for what OER has done for our students. It has impacted in a positive manner just a few of these things, which includes their professional development. We are accredited by the same accreditation body that accredits Harvard, Yale, John Hopkins, Stanford University. So in public health, we have an expectation of producing graduates that are up to par with these institutions. And so OER puts us in position with the benefit of reducing the cost to the student. So we can highlight interprofessional information. We can focus on their academic success by giving them the materials and tools they need. We can um, engage them much more intently when they can see things that are in real time going on. It's affordable. It increases their knowledge and awareness. And one of the main things about being accredited, it allows us the tools we need to address foundational competencies without the added expense being there for these students to have so many different publications that are very costly. And um, one of the main things I think it gives us and drives for us creativity, and one of the new competencies for public health is system thinking, being able to produce information um, in a visual context, especially without um, words. Let's see if I can get to my next slide. All right. So how did I find OER? Um, I was looking to increase my four A's. Instead of having an A, B, C, and a D, and you, you know, an F is flunking, a C is flunking in graduate school, I looked and found accessibility, affordability, here's a key ingredient, accuracy, and assessment. I could test students on the knowledge from the things that OER produced. I had a concern that textbooks were too expensive. Um, in one of my classes, my graduate classes, textbooks could run from all of the sources that I needed to focus on to address the competencies included uh, textbooks that ran from 200 to $250. That's way too expensive if you're asking a student to buy three textbooks. And then to find that the information is not always up to date. And then single sources, one textbook or one author, was oftentimes inadequate and limited in their focus. Didn't cover all the things we needed to in that graduate level education. And OER included an investment in faculty time um, looking for those things. Well, the advantages showed up right quick. You working with OER here at T Tennessee State University, they had faculty, they had staff, not just staff, but individuals involved with their up to their elbows in academics, um, finding for us and sharing with us specific subject information. Your, um, I would pop in and out of the OER spotlights, 
always get something new, write it down and run with it. And the information was always credible, okay? Um, I could find creative uses for it. We can hone in on a focus on someone whose expertise was right up there at front and were a forefront in the industry, and we could utilize their material and apply it in the classroom and outside the classroom. They got deeper learning experiences, especially in field placement, where it's a pass-fail course. And so students didn't want to spend a large investment on tax on textbooks in a pass-fail course. And so that made much more affordable options. Free is very affordable. And gave me the ability to address appropriate learning uh, mechanisms. One of my biggest, one of the biggest things that I have found I have in academia is that my peers are very um, critical of the fact that I make, oftentimes make my class things look easy or students will come out and say they're fun, okay? But I love what I do. I'm, I'm very um, into epidemiology and medical microbiology and infectious disease control. And it's a part of having the tools I need and especially if they're inexpensive, then it's kind of, it takes that kind of big relief off of a student like, okay, I'm in this class, where am I gonna find $600 extra dollars from? <sighs> I don't have that. I have all the materials at my fingertips. I can use them and I don't have to borrow them from a friend or worry about, I've got to rent them. They're there, okay? I get current information. This is from the student's perspective. I get it up to date from OER on a regular basis. They are facilitating faculty's use. You can't beat that. How can you beat it? You know, not only are the students satisfied, but if faculty would just tap into it, they'd be satisfied. It's user friendly. Now I can't help it because when I'm teaching something, I like to share the fun of learning. I've always done that since birth. Probably I was born telling my mother how to change my diaper. But one of the things I like for students when they step into the environment of public health, you cannot do public health if you don't like people. There's that word public in there. If you're not gonna like people, stay away, okay? And so what OER does for us, when we step into the classroom, which other faculty may hear about or other our peers may hear about is that they enjoy all the components of it. OER helps us to make things vis vis uh, visible. So we can step into three-dimensional labs using uh, videos and links that are oftentimes provided for us in the OER environment. Um, the information is credible. You can't beat the sources. It's understandable. It's translatable. We can meet students where they are learning. They're learning complex and complicated things and modeling is always readily available in using more than one source of information for a student, especially if it's free. And it gives us a powerful flexibility that is unheard of in the single textbook realm and it's unlimited. We can incorporate a resource here, a resource here, and almost put together a customized text environment for the student that gives them an edge unheard of, typically in the classroom. So I wanna do uh, some benefits. Um, when you engage open um, education resources, you stay current. You're always current. It's readily available to students, always. It eliminates the excuse of inaccessible to students. It eliminates the barriers of cost and it allows a more a focused teaching environment. We have materials that cover all of our health sciences. There is no limit to one discipline and public health is multidisciplinary. All of these uh, areas are part of public health. And all of these areas are oftentimes licensed and monitored 
by public health. It gives our students sources and resources that provide to them um, especially a wide variety of, of things to do, choose from. It helped us during COVID. It, it, there was no limit to the appropriate information that we can incorporate into our classroom, undergrad and graduate. You can see the savings here for our undergrad um, in our coursework and in the ability. We don't even, we haven't even uh, put all of the public health courses that have access to competent, reliable resources. These are just some that Dr. Um, Warner and I taught. So if probably it would be triple that if all of our faculty could be involved in it. An example for me is, um, I used to call it the pink book because they used to call it the pink book because it had a pink cover. But now they call it the CDC Field Epidemiology Manual. When you have that at your fingertips, you have at your fingertips all of the information the student will need in those chapters that when they step out of the degree in public health, they will have the tools they need to step into a leadership role in the job that they're going into. So from the beginning in that classroom to the job hunting and the uh, job seeking, our students have access to exactly what in the field they're going to need through using OER textbooks. Some quick question. So mm -hmm. you, you've used OER all year and mm -hmm. you've had a lot of, uh, the presentation was excellent. So the benefits, the solutions with all that you came up, how was it effective with your students? Was this very effective the use of the material? Yes, one of the one of the things that started me to using OER is I remember students having a dialogue a few years ago at the back of the classroom, and one student was bragging how, you know, Dr. M and lecture is so great, I've never bought a textbook, that they hadn't bought a textbook from being in the classroom. And the reason why I had to spend a lot of time in the classroom is I realized students couldn't often afford the textbook. And I had, I said, well, you know what, I'm going to do a quiz. And this was an A student, I'm gonna do a quiz, but I'm gonna do it totally on the textbook. And this is how the questions would go. On page 269, the author says, such and such and blah, blah, blah. Please answer that question to the ability, you know, and tell us and expand on it. And the day after the test, the student came in, tears in his eyes saying, I was in the fetal position, Dr. Edmund. I was crying because I have never had a textbook and I've never flunked the test. And that was eye opening for me. Mm -hmm. is I'm doing my students a disservice by they have to pass the courses because they have to have something that is very oftentimes pinching them beyond what they can afford. But if I can find something that expands them beyond what other students have, I want to give them an advantage. I want my students to have an advantage so that when they go they say, oh, we've got Bob here from Harvard, but we've got Al here from TSU, and he's got, he's got it going on. What's wrong with you, Bob? You know, Bob was limited to one or two textbooks. This gentleman studied the pandemic from the perspective of the real world in real time. Okay. And so that's what I want for my students. I want to give them the advantage. And so that triggered the whole whole thing for me. I don't know if I answered your question or not, but um, that's why students can step into the classroom and have fun is because every piece of knowledge is open to them and at their fingertips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The part of your presentation, what I see as a benefit is that it is current information, whereas textbooks was written prior to with OER, you're getting updated information, you're getting updated knowledge that you can use. So I think that it was good. And that's, that's why I asked, how was it benefiting to your students? Yeah, it benefits them on knowledge. They're, uh, they're on the cutting edge. They're knowledgeable. When they step out, they're not dealing with information from 2018 or 20, 2005. They're dealing with information from 2021, 2022. Mm -hmm. And one and textbook was, it wasn't published yet, but it was out there and available to read. Wow. OER sent me one 
that hadn't even was coming up publication for the spring and we were using it in the fall. I know that's wow. Oh, that's good. Yes, I love it. All right.